So here is the seed head then of Spartina um, and you can see the plant, um, the length of the stem around about 60 centimetres, which would be fairly common. They grows a little higher but about 30 to 60 centimetres and the seed head exposed here. So you can see a fairly dense um, coverage of the plant and there's very little light can get down towards the base here and the result of, of this dense vegetation of the cord grass uh, screening out any ability for the local um, grasses and other salt marsh species to, to thrive. So this is the reason that this becomes progressively a monospecific environment where only the core grass is able to survive is because of this change in light and also the ability of the stems here, the very close network of stems, to trap the, vegeta the, the sediment that is being brought in by a variety of mechanisms of daily tidal action wave action in some locations, but particularly the, 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 the tidal effect here is, is most important. And then occasionally the storm overwash into the environment. So sediment is trapped, builds up quickly. The Spartina can grow fast enough to keep pace with sedimentary change, whereas also these other plants, like the Salicornia I showed you, uh, can't keep pace with that change and so dies back very quickly. So our changing environment here, again, impacted by, by people. And in this broader environment, uh, as you see across the marsh surfaces with the remains of the salt marsh creeks, indicating again the environment has been conditioned by people, um, drained, the creeks developed and controlled uh, to provide uh, a, a, an artificial drainage to the marsh behind embankment walls. Now in this location now we don't see the embankments anymore. They've been um, degraded and not maintained. But formerly this area of marsh was embanked, a wall put around the marsh, and then the creeks channelized and controlled by sluices, perhaps in other locations we'll see those, and the area converted from tidal daily exposure to salt and tidal action to becoming progressively a rec reclaimed freshwater environment. And it was into that sort of setting then the idea grew of planting species such as salicornia and grasses to convert marshland into productive agricultural land. And this was very common along Ireland's coasts but also Britain's coasts in the mid 19th century and on into the 20th century. And most of the uh, the, the experiments with doing that uh, were not particularly successful, although grain crops, of course, were grown along these marsh environments, and in that sense, this embanking and draining of the marshes was successful. But the planting of core grass itself to provide fodder crops for farm animals was a dismal failure, and so it was never maintained. So sort of varying uh, successes with reclamation of these marshlands has taken place over the years. So an environment here at Harbour View that started off as a back dune environment of mudflat and then higher marsh through the 19th century as part of trying to reclaim land for agricultural purposes. The land often let go um, because of non-maintenance of, of, of these uh, areas and also by destruction from storm action. Um, in this particular area we've also got evidence of the ground being used for potato production in the famine periods for, from about the 1840s on through into the 1890s and one can find if one looks carefully in these marshes the evidence of the lazy beds that are very much more clear on the higher um, terrestrial land surfaces around us as these ridges of um, of the lazy bed marching up over the landscape. So you find these also down on the marshlands as well as plough marks and the ridged structures into which the potatoes were planted. And from that location, that's that, from that, that type of, of reclamation, um, this area was turned into a golf course or a sort of very low spec golf course back in the 1920s and 30s. And there's photographic evidence of that sort of environment at that time. And from the golf course, the ground has been let go and it's now a, a wetland uh, environment which people come and enjoy for varieties of reasons and of course the wildlife itself um, 
is, is a, 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 of, of, of primary um, uh, benefit um, from that sort of reversion back to, to a wetland.